Gotham Knights has an unexpected philosophy at its heart. While it might be a game about four superheroes trying to fill the void left by a murdered Batman, the developers don't want you to feel like you're creating four successors. They want you to find a favorite and turn them into a single new Dark Knight. We always understood that there had to be a sense by the end of the story and by the end of your kind of investment in the hero that you have in some way transcended the obvious potential of this character in order to become a symbol. This is someone who I believe can fill the vacuum Batman has left behind. So that's such an essential aspect of the fantasy that we felt like there needed to be a moment where that was reflected in the ability tree, where it was reflected in the kind of RPG foundations of the game. With that overall philosophy in mind, a game mechanic that has you constantly changing and experimenting with new techniques feels apt. Gotham Knights offers a lot of options in that regard, from new superhero suits to ability changing gear, but it doesn't make that idea clearer than in its skill trees. The main abilities that you see on the ability tree are abilities that you unlock after you've earned ability points. And that's something that's a natural function of leveling up in the sort of standard RPG way. You get XP, you level up, you get some ability points. And there's, you know, dependencies and prerequisites like you would normally see in an action RPG. But that is the gating mechanism for those abilities. You're spending points, you're deciding where you want to spend them. Of course, with four different heroes, you're likely to want to experiment. And the game accounts for that without feeling like you're leaving anyone behind while not playing with them. Obviously, we're a multi-protagonist game, and we expect that a lot of players are going to kind of identify fairly quickly that, okay, I like this hero, this character matches my style of play, I'm invested in their progression and in their evolution, I want to play that character for a long time. That said, there is a, you know, there's three other heroes that you may decide at some point uh, it would be interesting for you to try and that you want to be able to jump into playing without feeling like you're being penalized or need to go back and, and redo a whole bunch of work in order to kind of get them advanced. So then what happens is if you decide to switch characters, basically you now have a kind of surplus of ability points that you can go into the menu and spend. Now you'll sit there, you'll allocate them, you can look at the whole ability tree, you can decide what you want to, what you want to have access to. The skill trees themselves are made up of a mix of ability or stat changing upgrades, but the paths they take you down are purposely varied, allowing you to build different versions of the same hero. Batgirl can specialize in one-on-one -on -one melee combat, but she can also focus on hacking abilities or survivability. Nightwing can build on his acrobatics, but can also offer massive buffs for co-op play. Robin can improve on his preternatural talents for stealth, but he could equally work on tech that helps provide decoys or enhance elemental effects. And in this footage, we're showing off all of Red Hood's trees in their totality. So the marksman tree is kind of self-explanatory. It's really about dealing more damage at range. That skill tree focuses mostly on damage per second and rewards for shooting and rewards for taking the time to use precision aim. The brawler skill tree is about melee combat, but more importantly, it's about powering up the fact that Red Hood is our largest character and he's got the best grab and throw mechanics in Gotham Knights. That's a really, you know, sort of brutal hand-to-hand -hand focused skill tree. So if you're into that style of play, it's a great place to invest early to get the most out of Red Hood. The Vengeance Tree is essentially reflecting Red Hood's rage in different ways. He can be an intimidating character. It's sort of about leveraging parts of his personality and embodying them as abilities that allows him to be more frightening and to deal more damage against certain types of enemies that he is truly angry inside <laughs> about. Now you may have noticed that there's a fourth tree on that list, Knighthood. Perhaps the most interesting of all the ability options, Knighthood is available for every character and represents a moment of self-actualization where your hero has worked out how they can become their own Dark Knight rather than just a new Batman. Knighthood will begin to unlock after a specific point in the story, but every character will have to complete a set of unique challenges to begin earning the abilities inside. Unlocking the Knighthood tree gives you a couple of things. It unlocks the heroic traversal for that hero, so if you're Batgirl, suddenly you can glide. It unlocks your ultimate ability for Batgirl, that's the drone. And it unlocks the Knighthood ability tree, where you can start to add additional very powerful 
mechanics to your hero that are otherwise not available to you until that point in the story. Once you've unlocked knighthood for one character, you don't need to go and do the story beat again for that for the other heroes in order to gain access to, to that progression, um, but you'll need to go out and do the challenges for that hero that are associated with these additional abilities. Knighthood is a truly interesting combination of narrative and mechanic, a way of using traditional RPG ideas to help tell the story of Gotham Knight's budding heroes. So literally, there is a moment where it's possible for you to kind of have this epiphany with your with your character, right? It can be the moment that Robin suddenly, you know, he's like staring at the Batman shrine in the Belfry and he's like looking at the gauntlet, thinking about the technology and how Batman used it because, you know, he's like the most recent member of that team. And Robin's thinking to himself, wait a minute, you know, Batman wasn't just you know, what was in the back cave or just what, you know, what he had on his person. It was also his relationship and his connection to the bigger universe of these superheroes, right? The Justice League satellite. So that's kind of the moment where he goes, wait, I can tap into that. I can absolutely tap into that. And if I use it this way, it's gonna open up a set of abilities and some ways of fighting crime. And so that first moment is what opens up his heroic traversal. It's where he goes, I can do short range teleportation. So, you know, these are the kinds of sort of thematic links that we've tried to create with the Knighthood branch. And alongside all of these skill trees is another menu of unlockables, momentum abilities. These amount to special attacks that can be assigned to specific button combos. Many of the momentum abilities tie into the skill trees, but they're earned differently. In the case of the momentum abilities, you're getting those by engaging in challenges in the world. You know when you look at the momentum ability breakdown, in order to unlock that, I need to do the following four or five things. The most amount of synergy between abilities in different trees actually happens between the momentum abilities tab and the rest of the trees. For example, Batgirl's beatdown is a momentum ability, but can be powered up by other abilities in her tree that allow her to do it more effectively and with piercing damage, which the ability doesn't usually have at the start. The developer's goals with all of these trees isn't just to tack on RPG mechanics to an action game, but to provide a legitimate sense that your heroes are growing, learning and changing throughout the course of Gotham Knight's story. As a player, you're being asked to help create your own versions of those heroes, and the team doesn't want you to simply be able to fill out an entire skill tree on your first playthrough, encouraging you instead to pick and choose carefully. If you're playing through Gotham Knights in a regular way, so you're, I'm going after all of the main story arcs and I'm fighting the villain arcs, I will have unlocked most but not all of the skill tree. So your choices are always gonna matter as you, at least as far as what it takes for you to beat the story. I think players will and probably should mix and match to get the best out of the abilities in Gotham Knights. We know that players will choose ability clusters as we've arranged them in the trees because they are excited about an individual ability, but there is a lot of synergy between trees and also you kind of have to experiment to find out what you really like. So I do expect that players will mix and match quite a lot. If you want to know more about Gotham Knights, we have got tons for you in this month's IGN First campaign, including the first 16 minutes of gameplay and how Gotham was built as a brand new city with 400 years of history.